Hello, this is David Mandel here, and today we want to talk a little bit about Unix man pages. In particular, we want to talk a little bit about how to make Unix man pages for your own scripts or other software you write, and um, and how to do it in a quick and dirty way without learning everything there is to know about man pages. So, with that in mind, let's um, Let's do a quick outline of just exactly what we're going to be talking about. Um, and um, so fundamentally, what I want to talk about in this talk is Unix man pages, uh, the location of man pages, the man page or man path variable. Uh, changing the man path variable and how to change it for new users as you add users to the system without going in and doing that individually. Uh, the format of Unix man pages, the formatting system which is GROF or TROF or well we'll get into that uh, and how to write a simple man page. Um, by cheating, well, by copying, which is hardly cheating in the open source world. And then a little bit on man page maintenance. Okay, with that in mind, why are man pages, why, why are they important? Why do I think they're important? Man pages are not tutorials. They don't do a lot in helping you learn uh, Unix or Linux. But what they are is they're a reference for a command. And um, as such, when you're typing away and you need to know what, oh, what flag do I use on the ls command, man ls will tell you the answer right away. So it's a memory prompt. Um, sometimes you can learn things from the man pages, but you kind of have to know what's going on in order to use them because as I say it's a reference guide not a learning guide um, and U Unix power users are really dependent on the man pages they use them all the time I I'm always looking at the man pages but usually not for long periods of time just for a really quick prompt um, the man pages system is very old. It started in the early days of Unix. It uses software systems that seem rather primitive by today's standards and are rather primitive by today's standards. Um, they don't allow you to put pictures in your man pages. You can't put diagrams. You can't put hyperlinks. Um, all these new modern things. But um, well, we couldn't do that on um, um, scrolls written in Latin, and we still wrote the um, 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 a lot of great work, uh, the Magna Carta. Um, so, with that in mind, man pages are really good. They're really cool. They're an important part of the Unix system. <coughs> As a result, on my systems, I never allow somebody to make a command really public unless there is a man page describing it. In some cases, mostly the man page says, go to www for full documentation on how this works. But that's still useful because it tells you where, it's a central spot that tells you where to go for the next layer of documentation. Everything should have a man at Unix man page. Some of the newer software doesn't have Unix man pages. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> because a lot of people feel their system is old and they don't want to learn it and they don't real they just think there's better ways to document things. There may be, but I'm still a fan of the Unix man page system. Um, augmented with some other things. The result is, since possibly all your software developers won't know how to develop or won't know how or be willing to do man pages, um, it's incumbent on a Unix sysadmin to be able to do them for them, uh, to be able to do them, uh, at least to be able to teach people to do them. 
and usually you end up writing some for for people or certainly I write some for my own software do I actually make a Unix man page for absolutely everything now if it's a personal piece of software that's only going to be used by myself or two or three people I may just document it within the software like a like like within a bash shell script and leave it at that but if it becomes a you know somewhat major piece of software must have a unix man page okay let's look at the system a little bit here where are man pages located well first thing let's do a man space man and <coughs> in my case well, let's do a clear command whoop type man space man this will tell me a little bit about the man page system um, in the first place it in this case it gives me several man pages that I could type in a man one a man of whatever the other one was and a man one P we'll learn what those are in a second but and this will tell me a little bit about the man page or about the man page system if I bothered to read it but but I won't um, okay and most of your commands have man pages LS I believe that man page goes on for a long long time um, some of these man pages are very short and simple say man space XV whatever that is it's a very brief man page that's it man space bash might go on for six months I mean it's probably 40 pages long I think I, I don't know it's a long one so well here we're down to 30 um, well 5100 lines that's um, 50 lines a page that's 50 pages long okay um, so some man pages are short some are very extensive okay next thing where are the man pages located well you'll have to poke around a little bit to figure that out um, at least that's one way of doing it I suppose we could type space space slash a fine space slash space um, minus name man oh and maybe we will redirect the um, errors to the null file and that will probably tell me where the man pages are if I want to wait long enough actually that's going to spit out lots and lots of output um, I, I I believe uh, I'm not going to wait for it to examine the entire system but we do find that there are some man pages here uh, don't want to go there we if I lasted long enough it would tell me there's some man pages <sighs> I don't know sometimes they're kept under slash var they're not on this system sometimes they're kept under slash share whoops slash you uh, sometimes they're kept directly under slash USR slash USR slash man on other systems they're kept under something like slash share uh, slash USR slash share and down here we will find oh boy well one of the things under this whole list of stuff is man <laughs> so if we go down to slash usr slash share slash man on many Linux distributions you'll find the man pages here I believe there are other distributions keep them elsewhere I, I I'm sorry I I've got several distributions but I didn't check before I started doing the video um, 
So I'm only doing this from memory. OK, let's look, do an LS and look at the files down the here. These all, most all of these happen to be directories, with the exception of the whois file. But all the other ones happen to be directories. There is a man1, a man2, a man3, a man456, whatever. And then there are some other directories down here. The really important directories, if you're an English-speaking person, for our purposes, are man1, man2, man3, man4, man5, uh, etc. The ones with numbers. If you happen to be German-speaking, you might prefer man de. Or if you're Polish, man pl. Or if you're Malaysian, man. I think it's MY. I don't see it there. But, um, oh, they probably use the Indonesian pages. Um, maybe the that's close enough. Well, Japanese is JA, Italian, French, so on and so forth. Because there are man pages in most any language you want them. Because they are important, so they've been translated. OK. Um, to see just, and let's go down into man1 and see what's in man1. So I am now down under slash usr slash share slash man slash man1. And if I do an ls, I get about a zillion files down here. And I will see there are files for things like L, ls. Dot one. Uh, actually, it's interesting. Notice there's a dot one in almost all of these files. Uh, also, notice they end in a dot gz. They happen to be compressed using the gzip utility for compression. Um, and basically, there's files for most all of my commands down here. I won't say all. I'll just say most all. That may vary a little bit from distribution to distribution, too, because you can actually have many separate directories that you keep man pages in. So um, the, direct, the man pages for your commands could be separated into different man page directories. On most systems, most all of them are kept in one directory, and then there'll be a few others kept elsewhere. Um, as an example, I believe I've got some stored under slash op slash man, nope, slash dx slash man slash, whoop, that one's strange. That really should be uh, man1 down there. I'm. Um, I don't know why that's stored that way, but DX is it's a visualization product from IBM, and um, you know it isn't widely used, but except by a few specialists who use it widely. It's a great package, but um, I'm just saying this man page doesn't follow the system like most do. Uh, there's also often man pages kept under slash usr slash local. That's often where we keep the local man pages. And you'll see there's man one. That, this is a classic system in the way man pages are stored. If I go down into man one, well, it's empty because I haven't put a lot on this system or I haven't been good about making man pages. Um, I am on public systems. This is my own private system. And um, so maybe I haven't been as good as I should be. But I don't think I have much, many commands installed under slash usr slash local. So I haven't been that bad about it. OK, um, next we want to. Um, Let's go and just refer to Wikipedia down here under, we're going to look up man, the man command on Wikipedia. 
and it will tell us a little bit about the man command, usage, history, so on and so forth. Um, I'll let you look that up and read it yourself. But it does tell me what the man sections are. All the things under man 1 are supposed to be general commands. All the things under the man 2 subdirectory should be system calls, like sub, uh, C subroutines. Uh, all the things under the section 3 should be library functions. All the things under, um, from the standard C library, uh, all the things under four are special files. All the things under section five are file formats. So like if you need the file format for the cron job or for cron tab, it probably wouldn't be under cron tab, under man space cron tab as being in section one, but it would pre probably be under man space cron tab being in section five. So you could type man space five space cron tab um, or just type man space cron tab and it will give you options and you can get to it but it will be on uh, it should be under section five not section one don't guarantee it but that's the way it's supposed to work um, section eight is for systems administration commands um, and then there's some specialty sections, I believe. Section 1P, I think, is supposed to be for POSIX compliant calls. Oh, here. Section P for POSIX compliant calls. Section X for X windows. Um, and I don't think those are always as true as they're supposed to be. But, you know. Um, that is the theory. Okay. Now, whoop, let's take a look at a man page. Let me go over to my home directory, which is a mess. So let me make a directory called oh, man work. We'll go down into man slash work. Let's get a copy of one of these man pages. Let's go cp space slash usr slash share slash man slash man one slash oh what's a good man page to get a copy of um we'll do bash This is a horrible one to use, so we're going to go back and get a simpler one at some point. But let's just take a look at this one. There's our man page. Let's look at the file. It is. Um, it says it's a gzipped file, so it's kind of hard to look at as such. I guess I could use zmore or something like that. But what I'll do is I'll g uncompress that file. And I can change it because it's just a copy in my own directory. That gives me a file that looks like that. Now let's take a look at our file. We'll look at it in the Emacs editor because I like Emacs. And um, um, bash, uh, vi, pico, I don't care what editor you want to use. but. Um, uh, for this purpose. Actually, VI works really well. So, um, But we'll look at it with um, Emacs and just take a look at what that file looks like. Now, these files are written in a system called that I'll call star Roth. Star um, R um, R O F F. Um, there's a lot of Roth commands. I think the original system I think was called Roth, <laughs> and then they modified it and they called it in Roth, and then they modified that and they called it T Roth, and then they rewrote that to make sure it had a GPL license, and that was called G Roth. But they all work pretty much the same. Uh, 
TROF and GROF are really highly compatible. Well, in ROF too. So things, they really work pretty much the same. They were very, very early, oh, dare I say word processors? No, they weren't word processors. They were text formatters. They were before we had the what you see is what you can get word processors. And the way we did word processing at that time was to write um, markup language inside of our document, just like we write HTML today. Um, only we did that for everything. So you have various um, flags here that mean something and it's hard to and and it gets very complex it's a lot more complex than HTML as far as I'm concerned and um, and and then I will say because the basic commands were complex certain people decided to write macro packages that they added to the markup commands or like we wrote um, I don't know, um, CSS uh, um, um, to add into um, HTML to make it do more things or do them simpler. And, and so you get layer on layer on layer. Well, with the ROF system, you get layer on layer on layer of software. And, you know, unless you really know this system, it's hard to tell what's going on. But you can use it even if you, and the lesson I want to teach today is you can use it even if you don't know perfectly what's going on. Um, and um, I will say these lines here, dot backslash um, quote, those are all comments in the system. So those lines will never appear. So if I type man space bash, Notice this stuff up here never really appears over here because these are all comments. These down here, these dot uh, de dot s d s so on, I believe those have to do with the formatting of the rest of the document in terms of of um, oh things like the pitch the font to use, the pitch to use, the this to use, the that to use, um, things of that type. OK. Now, when we get down here, we will see this one here is the first one that gets very meaningful. Well, actually, um, There's got to be one up there further that's meaningful too, but we'll get back to that. Okay, this one here says, notice it's dot sh and it says name in capital letters. That is, it must be a section beginning because we have that over here in the, uh, in the um, um, document. The next one, uh, uh, next line says uh, bash and it says this thing here. And notice, that's the line you get here. Next, we get a new section. And there's a new section over here. So when I'm writing these and I'm doing it in a quick and dirty fashion, the way I do it is I just steal a um, um, man page that's pretty much like the one I want to produce and then I go through and I make substitutions in the editor. So let's make a substitution in this one just as an example. Um, um, we're going to call this David Mandel's O. Oh. Fouled up GNU born again shell. Okay. Copyright um, 
we'll change the date on the copyright. How about 10, 10 million? Okay. Now we're going to save our file. Is that going to work? Well, well, remember that. That's kind of the idea. So we should have a new. Ooh, oh darn! I really messed this up. Okay, let's open a new screen. Where was I? I we were in man work. Okay. And um, if I go back into Manwork, here's my file right there. And um, now the question is, how do I show my file? Uh, I'm not even going to worry about that too much. The next thing we want to talk about is, um, I want to get Emacs up. Actually, I want to bring up, sorry about this, I got this little goof up here. We're going to bring up Okay, that gives us our outline. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the man path command. What the man path command is, or it's not a command, I'm sorry, the man path variable. The man path variable is exactly like the path variable, only man path is for man pages, whereas the path variable is for executable programs. Remember from your Unix class, if you took one, that you have a path variable and you can type out, you can list that variable by being um, something like echo dollar sign path. And that gives you a massive, a list of directories and you can have commands in any of those directories. And if you type the name of the command, it will search to that directory and execute the command. Well, it searches the first directory first, the second directory, the third directory, and the first one it finds a command by that name, it executes it. Okay, that same thing is true of the man path command. If we have one, some of you may not have one. It depends on your distribution. By default, some distributions have them set, some don't. But there will be a man path command like this. This will be the location that you can find that the system will search for man pages. Now, let me take the man page that I have just here and I'm going to change the name of that to um, move bash.1 to bash to my bash dot one. Okay. Um, and um, and that should that will do it. Okay. Um, I can get rid of this guy here. I don't really need that bash thing. That is left over from Emacs crashing. Um, so there's my man, my, my, um, my bash dot one is there. Now I can actually make that into a man, uh, execute this as a man page, but the rules are I have to have this structure. Um, make directory man one, man two, 
Remember all those subdirectories, man3, so on and so forth. I'll just make three of them here for now. And if I put this file, move my bash down into man1, then under man1, I will have that file here, uh, that file, um, my bash.1. And I should be able to do a man and get my bash.1 just simply by doing, um, um, let's see, the man command. Man. Now, this won't quite work, but we'll show you how it will work. Just like that. It should work. It says no man page entry. But if I add this directory, onto my man path, it should work. So let's do this. Um, man path equal. Am I going in? Um, I'm not sure. I may need to export that guy. But man path colon slash and where am I? Home slash dmandel slash man work. Now, the way the rules are in this, I don't, I don't put in the subdirectories because the subdirectories are actually part of the man system. I just put in the directory where all those subdirectories are. So this should work. And there I get it. My bash. My bash is David Mandel's found out GNU born shell bash. So I can then, that shows you how I can make my own bash, uh, my own, um, um, uh, my own man page commands or my own man pages. So let me take a more organized look at this. The same stuff. Let me go up to Normally, where I put my own personal commands is I put them under a directory in my home directory called bin. Since my commands are put in a directory under my home directory called bin, then it might make sense that I would put my oh, whoops, put my personal commands put the documentation for those commands in a directory under my own area called man. So let's create a directory man because I'm afraid I don't have one already. So um, now in my own area, and I can't do an ls here because the ls is, I've got a billion files there. Um, so you wouldn't see the man because <laughs> there's too many files. But there is a directory in my own area slash home slash dmandel called man. And now I need to make a, uh, I need to make all those subdirectories man1, man2, man3, man4, man5, man6, Man seven, man eight. I think that's about it, as many as we commonly use. Let's look and see just what they have down here, or look in the man page. Yeah, they put eight of them down here. So um, that's about what's used. And oh, I often in practice, I often document a lot of my stuff just using man one, even. I really shouldn't because some of these are systems commands and I should be putting those in man what I um, in man 8 and some of them are def some of the things I document using this system are definitely formats data formats and those should be going into man 5 and on a big system with lots of users, I'm really good about putting those in the proper place. On my own personal systems, hey, it's lucky if I get them documented and put into man one. So 
Okay, well, anyway, we've got these here. So let's just copy the thing from, um, copy from, um, where was that? Uh, man work man one bash right into there. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'd like this man path command to get modified every time I ever come up. So how do I do that? Well, if I want to modify it for myself, I would do that by going into our good friendly editor, which of course is Emacs for me, and going into either my uh, .profile or my um, .bashrc file, uh, depending on which you like best and which you think fits your situation. Either one works. Um, and let's see if I've got a man path here. I don't have a man path here, but I would add a command here like, oh, added by David Mandel in uh, February 2015, uh, export man path equals dollar sign man path colon slash home slash demandall slash man. Now from then on any time I um, log on or open a new window I should have that man path and I should be able to type those commands. So let's see what I've got here. Let's look at my man path command. Echo dollar sign man path. Hey, look at that. Just exactly what I said we should have. And in that case, my bash should get me something. Hey, it works. It does indeed get me something. Now my question is, as I recall, the man pages were .gz files and I did not compress this and make this a .gz file. Um, I wonder if it would work if I did. So, whoop. Yeah, let's do this. G zip minus nine my bash. Well indeed I've got a I now have a, um, uh, a my bash file. Let's see if this still <laughs> works after I did that. Well yes it does. <coughs> okay oh and notice the copyright is that new date too. Sometime after the sun dies. Um, but um, what I wanted to say about the um, a compression of the um, man pages is some systems that I've worked on, the man pages have to be uncompressed. That was mostly old, old systems. The newer systems, usually the man pages may either be compressed or they may be um, uncompressed. Either one is acceptable. So usually I don't bother to compress my man pages. I mean, they compress them because they take so much space, but if you're only doing half a dozen of them, they don't take that much space on a four gigabyte or four terabyte disk drive. So I usually don't bother unless I think about it and then I compress them. The compressions allowed de vary a little bit depending on what your Unix you're using. Some of them use the, well, some of them at least used to use the compress command. Um, um, others use the um, the one that gives you the dot 
XZ ending. Most of them that do compression use the G-zip. Um, I suspect a lot of them, it doesn't matter uh, what compression you use, they will decompress them just fine. Um, so, you know, experiment with it. Find out what works in your environment or don't compress them at all. Um, that is just fine. So, um, I suppose I should take and do one more um, one more um, man page here just to get another example. So let's take a look here at what I've got in my bin file. I think I've got a file oh boy I've got a program here um, Let's look at this program. And I've got to look at the program a little bit to see what it does. Let's look at a program here called um, bin slash my video. OK, it says that this program, and this is sloppy. There was never a man page written for this. There never will be a man page written for this, um, except right now. Um, because, you know, it's a throwaway program. It's only got three lines of code, uh, four lines, uh, or five lines. Um, it says it's to capture video and sound for a screencast. This procedure is designed to get quality, um, uh, uh, quality screencast. OK. And it's designed to run on one of my machines here that is a, a, an older four quad or four core machine. OK, um, and what it does is it pops up a couple little, um, it pops up a, a clock, and it, um, oh, pops up this little window that shows who I am. And it uh, turns on XVID cap, which actually does the screen capture, but I do it without catching sound because XVID cap doesn't capture scan sound very well on machines that use a L S A video or audio. Uh, XVID cap is meant to capture something called pulse audio, and my system doesn't capture or my uh, pulse audio just sucks on my system. Uh, it doesn't exist on my system. So you've got to do an emulation, and the emulation doesn't work well. So then I use Audacity to capture the sound, and I merge the two together in um, um, some sort of a video editor. Uh, OpenShot is the one I usually use. OK, but that's after it's all done. OK, so we're going to document this some which way. Um, so next thing we will do then is we're going to go into we're in the right area. And we've got to get a little program. We're going to, I don't want to start with bash. Like that bash program, that would be awful because it's huge and long and ugly, and I only need a little bit of documentation. So I don't want anything that big. So let's look for a program that maybe is simple and easy and doesn't have much of a man page. I think there's a program called, oh my, JPEG to PN. N M might be a good one. Let's look in the man page for that. Don't like that. That's too long. It, if we have to, we'll use that. How about um, man? Well, let's see. It's another one. What's timer? That's a graphical program, so I bet it's got a bad man page. 
It's worse than bad. That, that is a part of KDE, and they did not even put in a man page. As I said earlier, some of the new, younger people don't believe in man pages. And um, I think that's sinful because I, everything, every, everything should have a man page. Um, OK. Um, where's another command that might work? I don't like XV. Yeah, XV, you know. We'll use XV. I don't, uh, the reason I don't like XV is it doesn't have certain sections that I like. I would prefer one that had a section on, um, Maybe examples, or or some of them have sections on ref yeah a, a section that gives refer to other commands. If I need to, I could pick that out of another man page and just pull it in. But um, you know this one works okay. So let's see if I can find this um, command. Let's just take a guess here. USR slash source uh, share slash man. It's going to be under section one, I'm almost sure. X. Oh, of course, it could be labeled as an X command. XV. How about that? XV, X. That's it, I, I think. I'm pretty sure. Um, okay, now I want to rename that because x the dot x1 dot, that means it's an X Windows program. This is not X Windows, so we're going to rename that as dot. Uh, we're going to rename this as, what's the name of the program I'm doing? My Video Capture dot one dot GZ. I, I need to save the dot GZ because I haven't uncompressed it yet. I'm about to do that. Okay, that's there. Let's uncompress this. G uncompress my my vidcat uh, or my video capture. There it is. Okay, let's bring that up into Emacs. Actually, I could just bring it up into this copy of Emacs. Man, space, man1, space, my, OK, now. Let's go back here. This top line here looks like the name of the program and the section it's in or something like that. We're going to call this, whoops, uh-oh, it doesn't let me modify, it doesn't let me do anything with that. That's probably because I don't have the right access rights. So let me go back here, see what my access rights are. Sure enough, I don't have right rights to my own file here. So let's do um, change mod. Um, user plus W. Does that help? That looks better. Now let's go back here, and I've got to reread this file in because, um, and I hope that will work. That didn't work. I've got to kill this buffer some which way. How do I kill the buffer? Um, I could go out of Emacs and back in. I don't like that. 
I'm just, I don't want to do that because I want to save this buffer. Well, that's okay. Let's just do this. Let's go out of Emacs. Let's come back in. That's the file that has all the information about what I'm doing. And then we'll do this file. That gives me an Emax that will, should should look pretty, should work pretty well. Okay. Now, over here we want to change the name of this guy to um, the name of my program, which is my video capture. Uh, that's one because it's in section one. Um, today's date is, I don't know, 16 February. Two thousand fifteen revision zero whoop zero point zero zero one. I don't, it's an early revision. Uh, um, name. I don't know what these that B is. Well, we'll uh, let's save the thing. Let's see what happens if we type man space my video capture. go over here and type it. Okay, now let me say the reason that didn't work in the first screen is remember that screen I was playing around with the man path and I had not made the change yet in in um, in the dot bash RC file. This screen here was opened after I made the change in the bash RC file so everything is working in this one. In the other one, well you may be pretty hokey. In fact on every other one on my display it may be pretty hokey because um, because I hadn't made that change yet uh, to the bash RC file. Anyway, here this is. Notice how this top line has changed. Okay, now let's try to make changes in this line. Um, most likely that B is says probably stands for bold. So we're going to put my video whoop capture and over here we're going to change this with um, start programs needed to capture video. raw video. Well, I'll capture raw video, uh, unedited video, pre-edited video. That's not very good, but we're not trying to get the wording right. It should probably be to capture David Mandel's pre-edited video or something because it, this is really specific to me. Okay, and then we're going to put um, X, no, 
my we're going to put the name of the command. Let's copy and paste it. Takes too much time to do it. Uh, okay. Save that file. Go over here. Do the man page again. And notice I'm getting two options here. That will eventually go away once I'm done with my editing and I can eliminate that temporary file that Emacs makes for me that ends in a one, in a tilde. Um, so at the very end, I need to remember to kill, uh, erase that file. But in the meantime, here's what I'm getting here. That looks good. Now here's where I put in a lot of options and everything, but this program doesn't use any um, any options, so we won't put in any. Okay, and then I can put in a description. The let's do a cut and paste, or I, I mean a paste, not a cut and paste. Um, well, you know, let's go down here. We'll take out this part. We're going to put in does good things. Okay, that's not very descriptive, but that gets the point across. Then the next part of this is the aside here. That seems to be a new paragraph. So this gives me a new paragraph. If I want to put in a new paragraph, I would do it down here. This I, where's the only? If I go through here, only is underlined. So that I must do underlining of the rest of the line, something of that type. Um, let's just eliminate a lot of this. Oh, dot .pp is a new paragraph too. So I'm not sure what LT, uh, dot .lp is, but uh, how about real good things? Uh, we don't need any more here. This one we probably want to keep because that's a PP command. Um, oh, maybe we want to keep a little more up here. Let's go back here. Let's go here and let's delete all of this. I actually don't need two paragraphs here. So let's delete that. Let's go down here uh, for more information. For more information, see um, www. David Mandel. Well, there's not much on that web page, but that's the idea. Author. David Mandel. D. Mandel at davidmandel.com. Um, and I, you should always point down a contact contact information, both in your programs and in your documentation. Um, that lets people tell you when there's errors, there's bugs, um, uh, things of that type. It um, lets people get a hold of you. Um, you know, if somebody wants to hire you to modify the program, and that does happen. Um, you know, you're trying to get your name out there. That's kind of People have to know who you are, so that that's part of it. So, while you don't go out and trout yourself like um, 
um, the Kardashians, you do need to do some um, some branding. If you do something, take credit for it. Make sure you don't do credit. Take credit for more than you did, or you'll look like Brian Williams looks at the moment. Um, make sure you share credit with everybody that deserves even a little bit of it. But um, um, but do make sure your name is there as a responsible person and and some contact information. Um, that is, um, it's good for you. It's good for the community. It's it's a win-win situation. Okay, let's see how that looks now. Uh oh. I don't know why that is coming out that way. It is. Go back, take a look at it, and you know, if I went back and took a look at it, it would be some small little thing, and uh, I get that straightened out pretty quickly. Um, I think um, let's go back and look at this here. I've been going on for quite some time here. Um, I want to look and just make sure that we got everything covered. There is one other thing. Um, whoops. OK. We've covered everything in writing man pages. We've covered it fairly thoroughly, I think. This is sort of a quick and dirty way to get started writing man pages after you've written a few man pages or after you, if you get to writing a lot of man pages, you should actually start reading about uh, uh, GROF and learning the GROF system. It is kind of hard to learn. It's not terribly, at least I found it's not terribly well documented. It's documented in a very confusing manner. And there are all these macro systems that can be applied to uh, GROF and TROF type pages. And it's confusing to know what's going on when. Um, and sometimes one of them's documented, and one of them's not documented. And the one you need is not documented, and the one you don't need is documented. So you read that documentation and find out it's all wrong because it's not what you were doing. Um, it, the system is a little confusing, I find. But you know, I've used it for years. Uh, before word processors, I kept my resumes in it. A lot of people use I. There may still be t people use it for typesetting and stuff because it's got it's got options that you can't do with um, normal word processors. A lot of the kerning and stuff, so it may still be used a little bit for uh, for type by typesetters and people of that type for very fine printing work. Although most of them use another system called Tech. Um, uh, certainly, the mathematics type people tend to use tech, uh, which is a, another old text form uh, text uh, formatting system, rather than as opposed to a word processing system. And those things are a little like they take the place of where you might use uh, Microsoft um, um, PageMaker or or something like that. Um, and um, and they work. They work quite well. I will say there is one other thing about man pages. After you modify your man pages, you should run a file, uh, a command called man db, which updates the database that is used to um, uh, keep some of the man page information like where the man pages are. And in particular, it keeps him, it keeps all the information that's used for the where is, I think it's the where is, what is command and the apostrophe, 
option of the man pages, which I don't use very much, but a lot of people love those. And I must say, as a systems administrator, I have massive guilt that I do not always remember to run MANDB and thus update the database uh, the way I should. Um, but And I suspect that that's not at all just me. I suspect that's common. Um, we should try to be better about that than I am. But uh, so that's the last thing I had to talk about. Um, so um, yeah. So we, as I said, we should all be better about trying to run MANDB from time to time to maintain our MAN pages. Um, actually, that's just after we update them because the ones that come with the distribution, you know, they're up to date for the man pages that got loaded from the distribution, so that that should all be taken care of automatically. But when we create our own man pages, then we should run MANDB to update everything and get it spread, get those, get that portion of things spread throughout the database. However, you can still access the man pages that you build by using man space and the command name. And um, so it's not tragic if you don't run man DB. Um, so I think everybody should have the experience of building on one or two man pages. Um, and um, <laughs> So I always put it in my lab to build one or two man pages. Do I build them all the time? No, but any time I build good, so decent software, I do build a man page. You would never see me build something like K-Timer without a man page. And I, I just think everybody, you know, I, I think that's part of the standard and everybody should be writing man pages for things of that type. Um, but hey, I'm a voice of one. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to sign off. Bye-bye.